Welcome back to Statistics. This is Dr. Kling. And we're resuming our discussion or lesson on using the calculator. And you'll hear me talk about norm CDF and invnorm. These are two functions in the calculator. And I want to show those. Later on, I'll show TCDF and chi square CDF also in the same talk. So uh, start with norm CDF. What you're trying to do is convert a Z, so a measure in standard deviations, to a percentile. So if you were thinking of <coughs> everything to the left of Z or everything to the right of Z. Now I'm having trouble getting my emulator to work to the left of Z, so I'm just going to show you to the right of Z. But if it were working properly from the left of Z, we could do norm CDF from let's say negative 10 to negative 1 and that would give you the, the percent or a p-value I'll call it below for z below negative 1. Negative 10 is sort of as, as much as you need to kind of get negative infinity. And if I want to get z the p-value that is the percentile from let's say 1 to infinity so then we would get so for everything to the right of a z of 1 or so everything to the right of, of one standard deviation we would do norm CDF from 1 to 10 and that'll do it and so that's what I'm going to show now on the emulator Okay, so here we are, and we'll go to, so I'm, what I'm trying to do is norm CDF from 1 to 10. So second, distributions, go down to normal CDF, enter, and we'll do 1, comma, 10, and <coughs> get our answer. Okay, 0.1586, that's our p-value or percentage uh, for getting um, for a z of 1 or greater. And we could do, in principle, I could do the same thing from negative 10 to negative 1. I've always been able to do it on a real calculator, but this emulator doesn't like to do that for some reason. Okay, so that's norm CDF. Now let's uh, do another one. Let's do invnorm, which is converting percentiles to um, back to natural units. So if I do were to put an inverse norm of about 0.1587, I should get back something like 1 as my standard deviation. So let's see if that happens. So second distributions. Now we have the inf norm, so we'll go down to that, enter, and let's do 0.1587, and what do we get? Um, okay, so that gives you a, a negative one. Yeah, that's right, because we're way on the left of the normal distribution, it's about negative one standard deviations gives you about the sixteenth percentile. So that's invnorm. Okay, next I want to look at TCDF, which is a lot like normal CDF, <coughs> except it takes another argument, a third argument, which is something called degrees of freedom. I'm just going to show it to you, and later on in the course you can use it. So it, it what it does it, is it converts uh, t <coughs> statistics to p values. So a lot of times you won't have to do this, but if you had to calculate a p value by hand, given the t value, you do second distributions. Then we go down to tcdf. tcdf, and now we're going to have three arguments in that. So we enter, and let's just let's use one again, one comma ten. So we're in some sense one standard deviation um, above the mean, and I'll put in let's say twenty-five degrees of freedom, and I'll get a 
a percentile or a p-value of 0.16. Um, so let me just, okay, so that's that. That's a t-cdf. And again, you could do from negative 10 to negative 1, although I don't trust that we'd be able to do that on this emulator. Okay, the next one I want to show is chi-square CDF. Again, you're converting a chi-square statistic to a percentile or p-value. And there you, you can only go in a positive direction. You can't go in a, in a negative direction. So we'll do second vars, second distributions, and this is the chi-square thing down we don't want PDF, <coughs> chi square CDF, where is that? Chi square CDF, and let's say, oh, we got a chi square statistic of 8. And now, infinity isn't 10 in chi square. We need actually a pretty big number. I'm going to be safe and put in. Um, let's say 10,000 and then there's also a degrees of freedom in chi-square let's say I happen to have six um, when we actually teach the chi-square distribution I'll show you where the degrees of freedom comes from and then I think I can just hit enter and that will give me yes the chi-square of <coughs> 0.238 in this case so that's a p-value uh, from a chi-square statistic. So if you had a chi-square statistic of 8, this would give you the p-value of 0.238. So all these, these functions that we've been showing, the normal CDF, t-CDF, and chi-square CDF, are what you would get if you could, would look up values in a table, like there are tables in textbooks uh, of these distributions. And then the inverse norm is sort of looking at the normal table kind of inside out, from inside the table and out. And I think that's all I'm going to do on these functions.